Hi. Welcome to Artists and Critic. I'm Don Gray. Uh, today we have, I think, a rather interesting show, and uh, I certainly expect a provocative one. Uh, we're going to be speaking with a new group of painters who are about to make their debut on the New York art scene, uh, the street painters. And we say make their debut, they're about to have their first exhibition, but many of them have been painting on the streets of New York for 15, 20 years, or more or less. And uh, we'll get into, during the program, uh, some of the problems in painting on the street. Why are they out there while the majority of uh, other artists are simply painting in their studios and not dealing with reality at all, whatsoever. Okay, we're going to introduce uh, the street painters to you, and uh, I'm one of them, and I'm on the camera here, but the next uh, artist is going to be, uh, or is the camera going to be picking them up? What side are we starting on? Well, we plan to start this way. If you're over there, just flash up a painter, and uh, he'll be breathing, and uh, he'll be telling us what he's doing in a little bit. Uh, on screen now is uh, Bruce McGibney, a uh, member of the Street Painters. Next to him uh, is Ronald Denota. And incidentally, behind the painters, you're seeing some of their paintings. And uh, following Ron is Myron Heiss. Following Myron is myself, but you've already seen me, so we can just pan by and pick up the next street painter, which would be Ken McIndoe, who will be coming up. There he is, Ken McIndoe, with a couple of street paintings behind him. Moving on to the next street painter, we have Philip Sherrod, the wonderful one, <laughs> with, I think, one of his paintings behind him, actually. Uh, next to Phil, we have Ari Rusimov. There's Ari. And next to Ari is Simon Gayon. There are uh, 11 members in the group. Uh, absent today are Bill Zengut, Tad Day, and the one woman member of our group, Inger Yerby. Uh, the street painters. Uh, have met out on the streets and are creating art, uh, vivid art and intense art from reality, both on the streets, some are out in the country, painting the country roads, the pastures, some are in their studios, transmitting the images of the city in their studios. Uh, I'm gonna throw it to uh, Philip Sherrod and let him uh, give us some idea. What are the street painters about, Phil? Well, what, what are they trying to accomplish, would you say? Well, I'd rather speak for myself and let, let the rest speak for themselves. Um, I myself went to the street about 19 years ago uh, with an effort to reach more directly, uh, to meet, in a sense, head-on the compositions, the energy and the color, uh, to maybe work out a more direct response rather than the typical pictorial, boring, laborious, uh, picture making that I feel has been uh, in American art, or maybe I could say art throughout the centuries. I'm more interested in a direct feel and relationship than art itself as an intent. Uh, Bruce, how about you? What, uh, what is the inspiration of your painting? How do you feel it's any different from what personally I consider some of the formula painters of today who simply work from theory and have no contact with life whatsoever? What, uh, well, well, what the are you up to? Is that I've always worked uh, exclusively just about from imagination. So uh, my heart is in the street, really, but uh, I like to work from my imagination because uh, that automatically uh, creates a certain originality, I think, although I'm not trying consciously to be original. I think everyone's imagination automatically organizes and composes a life's experience, and if you can somehow uh, transmit that onto a canvas and get it down as accurately as you feel it and see it in your mind's eye, you can uh, experience the thing fully that way. Okay, Myron, how about you? Yeah. Well, what are you after? Well, what uh, what makes you unique? I'll tell you why I sort of um, am, um, got excited by the street. Like I, I'm from a farm on Nebraska, so like when I come to New York, it, it, was, it excited me very much, and uh, I'm still excited by it, and I find the real vitality the real life there. And um, like the, I just want to say a thing about the, how the street uh, painters come together. Like, like there's 
many of us have painted together on the streets, as many as five, six, seven, and, uh, and we decided to you know, become a vital group. How, how is it that you fellows are out on the street while, really, as everyone knows that the art of our time is, is basically artificial, it's removed from vital experience of life. Well, why are you out in the street? Uh, Simon, well, what, are, what are you doing out there? But, uh, well, I think, you know, philosophically, for me, I've always been sort of somewhat anti-intellectual as far as my, my needs go in, in painting and otherwise. And uh, being in the street is, is uh, a direct confrontation with, with energy, with vitality that's, that's happening out there. And the people attract me, the people that I can't invite home, the people that I can't really find amongst my friends, the types, the personalities, uh, the danger, the, just the overall uh, tension of the street excites me itself. It's a very manic state for me. When I'm lonely, wherever I am around the world, you know, it, I'm attracted to the lights, you know, to where things are happening. You know, it's an endless walk where you never really arrive anywhere, but yet, you know, it's perhaps much more exciting than anything I've ever experienced. Well, I'm really struck because everything all of you are saying is completely the opposite of the, what is what might be called the official art of today, the established art of today. Do, do you people feel that you are uh, in reaction to what's happened, or have you always just been naturally led to paint your personal experiences with feeling? Ari, what about you? Do you? I think that um, all of us were doing what we were doing for however long we were doing it, and by chance or by fate that brought us together, uh, we've united and we're ready to really start hitting and we're going to, in a way, we're, it's like, we're sort of like a fire that's hit a little village. And once the fire hits, there's no putting it out. Yeah, that's a very good image. I, I feel much the same way. I think that uh, this may be the beginning of a new m movement, uh, uh, really a resuscitation of putting life back into art. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe this is going to happen. Ken, you're one of the painters who uh, lives in the country. You've certainly painted in the city and you come back in periodically to paint. What, uh, what's your feeling about the street painters or your personal direction in painting? What, what, what are you after? Uh, well, Don, I, I, I guess I came to be a street painter um, because I lived in the, in the city and uh, I like to relate to the direct experience of the outside. I think uh, I saw I'm a transplant from, from England and um, I came here to the United States and what most took me uh, initially were some of the great landscape painters uh, that America had. And um, I think that may have started me off uh, in the outside. Mm -hmm. um, it was uh, not perhaps uh, um, so subconscious, therefore. I liked, I liked the outside rather than the inside. I mean, you thought um, about it and you, you know, consciously, you consciously yes, made a decision. Yeah, 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 I did, Don. Um, I, I, um, I uh, didn't like the, the, the claustrophobic uh, studio. Mm, yeah. um, I wanted the vastness mm. and the openness. Uh, and that, I felt, was necessary in the human spirit to live. Okay. And that what is what I find very necessary um, for, you know, um, all of us to, to receive, and which I uh, try to put in the painting. The street painters are trying to create a living art, and uh, that is the s summation of what's happening so far. I might mention before we go to Ronnie Denota that uh, street painters is also used as a metaphor. We, we've discussed that to a certain extent. It, it, it means basically that everyone is out in the street, they're painting street subjects, but it also is a metaphor for the fact that of the desire to confront life, to experience life with all its vigor, all its vitality, all its excitement, as opposed to some very theoretical forms of art, very manneristic forms that are taking place today that have nothing to do with life but simply with established formula. Ron, what, what, what are you trying to express in your painting? We, we have yours back here someplace. What, 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 why are you out in the street? I'm out in the street really because uh, I feel as an inner feeling in myself to uh, paint something I, that I don't know. I have no, no training in painting. I'm one of the, the, this group. I'm self-taught. I've been always in the street. I met Phil and Simon. And they, I've been always painting more or less like uh, direct with nature. Yeah in the country, 
and in the marine paintings, the ocean. And uh, Phil brought me out here in the street a few years ago, and I'm trying to find something that's there that is, uh, I can't really explain it. Okay, well, I I'm think the you're silent one in the group. Oh, well, I got to look at my paintings, and that's, that'll you, talk for itself. You're, that's very well put. Your paintings certainly are going to talk for themselves, and others will too. Uh, I think Ronnie's made a very good point that there are a group of really instinctive painters. They paint in a lot of different ways, but they're uh, <clears throat> reaching deep into themselves to express feelings, ideas, reactions. They're open to response. They're open to new ways of, of uh, looking at things. Are there any? Other comments that anyone is burning to say, Phil is, and then we'll look at our pictures and we'll give people an idea what the street painters are like. Well, what, what I'd like to get down to is, is the uh, similarity between the different individual attempts. I think if you look at the work, uh, whether it's the exhibition coming up in March or whether you look at it directly behind the camera at the moment, I think you'll see a certain imposto, a certain impatience, a certain aggressive, uh, direct uh, assault, uh, an attack which opens up where so many of the past uh, efforts in painting have been introverted, uh, intellectualized, and too contrived. Uh, there's, there's a real direct aggressive response to life here. There's, there's a feeling which is placed above, and in other words, when I go paint particularly, I don't want to be involved with anything other than my feelings from the gut, inside out to the visual stimulus and I paint almost from the eye uh, of course the mind after walking past the street daily absorbs certain uh, symbologies uh, but when I paint I want to reach down into the the, the whole feeling of life I, I don't care about anything other than just uh, spitting out so to speak uh, the image uh, running the rhythms within color and uh, form and, and who cares how it comes out other than there are good ones and there are bad ones uh, okay, but it's an instinctive emotional expression, and uh, I would like to mention that the first exhibition of the street painters will take place at the 47 Bond Street Gallery, March 12th through April 1st. Uh, this will be the premier exhibition of the street painters and promises to be uh, not only a very effective living exhibition, but possibly a landmark exhibition. It's only time will tell, but these painters are so in opposition whether consciously or otherwise, through their natural painting instincts, are so in opposition to established trends that uh, something is very likely to develop here. Uh, I'd like to uh, have you see some of the pictures by the street painters, and, and I'll, I'll hold them and we'll have the artists uh, look at the pictures. The first, um, okay, we're, we're going over here. We'll, we'll shift it here a little bit. Uh, we. Here we have a painting by uh, Bruce McGivney. Bruce, what were you trying to express in this uh, picture? Well, it's obviously the pavement, the street, and uh, a drain that's the center uh, force in the painting. But uh, I'm sure that basically, again, I work from the imagination. So I'm getting the mystery, the intrigue, the suspense of the most common uh, sight in the street. And uh, also, uh, technically, the preoccupation at this time was with a third dimensional quality. The uh, wrapper uh, is uh, in the foreground, laying on the pavement, is actually a fruit pie wrapper uh, glued onto the canvas. And I'm intrigued by the different properties of the real and the uh, painted. OK, I'm going to just turn this off on camera here. Uh, you know, incidentally, how many, how many times do people ignore the manhole, the people in the street, you know, even from the legs on down? Bruce, what were you up to with this? Well, this was in a period of painting. It lasted about a year where I was painting white light and all the uh, prism forms of color that come out of white light. So uh, every uh, subject that I used, I used, uh, again, the, the other was a 3D, 3D preoccupation. Here was a light preoccupation. But I used the language of the street and of reality. I'm not interested in just the formalistics. Uh, I was interested in white light, but it, rather than just painting white light or creating it, I painted scenes. OK. Thanks a lot, Bruce. Uh, I think that uh, one thing the street painters are going to do is to draw attention of people to the street. There are so many visually exciting things happening out there. The relationship of people to signs, the drama of 42nd Street. Ronnie, well, what are you up to in this picture here? Is, is this, this is 42nd Street, isn't it? In the Hi, yes, it is. You said your paintings would speak for themselves. So help, help them along here and tell us what you're, I try, I'll try what, to. what you're up to here. Well, why did you choose, why are you out here in Times Square? You know, I mean, that's supposed to be 
this rough place that the tourists avoid and people think of it as this kind of decadent, rotten part of town. Why are you painting in that part of town? Well, as I said before, before I uh, met uh, Phil and, uh, and Simon, I uh, was involved in, in the painting, nature paintings. And uh, I, I was born in New York City. And they, I was always a sort of uh, intimidated in getting into the street. I met these friends of mine, and they got me out there. And I've, I'm trying to, to uh, as I said before, something within myself. I was trying to find something that's out there, I'm trying to put it all together. I can't really explain what I'm doing because I have uh, people asking me what my concept is. I really can't say. OK, well. And they said I'm not it's obvious that it's a, a very emotional response and you know there's an awful lot of vitality and life out there and that's what the painters are after that's what Ronnie's obviously after there's a great vibrancy of the lights right. and the signs and the and the life of the people and, and so forth and well, let's take a look at your next one Ron just briefly and uh, well this painting I'm, I'm going to uh, to uh, describing what it's can, can you hold all the mic a little closer what it's all about but we had a lot of fun doing this painting this was a rainy night, and it was across the street. This is on Canal and Broadway. And across the street, there was a little uh, Simon and uh, Phil. We were all out there painting. And there was, there was a donut place there, and uh, that smell from the making the donuts there. We, <laughs> we, <laughs> and that was what, what became of it. And besides, that night we had an accident leaving. So, but I mean, <laughs> well, well, it was so, a painting. Well, I guess well, well, I got to do with it, but uh, we had well, what was an the exciting accident? night. Can you tell it us the accident? About it. What was the accident, very briefly? Can you tell, what was it? You won't tell us. Okay, no, well, no, Ronnie's, no. Holding out, <laughs> Ronnie's holding out on us on the accident. But, you know, as the other street painters were saying, yeah, boy, that's that is really rainy. And Ronnie really caught it, obviously. Okay, here we move to uh, Myron Heiss's work. Myron, what are you up to here? What, what, what's she up to? Okay, well, this, the title of this painting is Go, Go, Girls with Water. Let's see her again. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> like like uh, Ronnie, I, I like the Times Square area. And it's like, I, I guess I focus more into the, the people or interiors, uh, also out, uh, exteriors. But uh, this was made from a, like a thumbnail sketch, like a 20-minute uh, sketch. And I, it was then it was mostly invented in my... Uh, studio, although I did go back to check out a few things. Okay, there's a great flavor, obviously, of the uh, exotic quality of it. And look at the difference in style between Myron and, and Ronnie. There is no one way of painting, although there is a strong expressionist tendency in the group, or as someone might call it, uh, another word. <laughs> we may get into that. I don't know whether we'll get into it or not. But uh, here's another, what's this, Myron? Okay. Intensity. Yeah, there's a, there's a... Okay, this is, well, the title of this is Men Come and Go. I mean, this is a... Um, a burlesque house. There's like it's a burlesque on one half, and it's a a, a movie theater, a uh, live burlesque, and and then sex movies on the others. And the men coming in, sort of like a like a merry-go-round, going in, and some coming out. And then then there's a woman counting the money. I don't know if you can see that, but she's like counting the green that. in yeah. in the, the cashier. Yeah. But it's just the flavor. I guess I'm attracted to this funky feeling of uh, Times Square, 42nd Street, this type of uh, life. And a lot of my paintings concern that, as, a, as the Hotel Dixie, which is uh, in the background. This kind of life has much more vitality and uh, power to it than the rigid, proper life of the Park Avenue matron or any other conventional lifestyle that we might talk about. Um, oh, this is me coming up here. OK. Uh, there's a portrait behind me. This, this was done several years ago in New York, a street organist, Salvation Street organist in Pastel. Uh, in front of Bloomingdale's, and uh, I was just interested in the relationship of the forms and the different people going in the background. They're not possible to see, but there's some in wheelchairs, and there's some hunched old people, and so forth. Uh, I'm currently in the country now, painting the uh, country scenes and uh, the little rural town scenes, but this is another pastel from New York, a fire engine. Obviously interested in it because of the beauty of the form of the engine, the dynamism of it, the rich red colors, which you can't see in black and white, and the different uh, structural details of the lights, the hoses, and of course the fireman with his uh, uh, engine. But uh, we're all after reality. I've always been interested in reality. We've all been out in reality, whether it's been the fields or the streets, for uh, many years. Uh, Ken McIndoe is coming up here with uh, 
a couple of uh, rural scenes. You're in Princeton, New Jersey, are you, Ken? And, uh, uh, very, very close. Very close. Down, yeah. Well, what are you uh, what, doing in this picture here? What, what am I doing? It's the cows. <laughs> the cows are the ones that are doing it. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought right, I saw there, a cow with an right, easel there, on there. <laughs> Well, they might be. No, I'm just they're kidding. They're at the uh, feeding trough. Uh, actually, they're just all eaten. They're just uh, sitting around belching, I think, <laughs> yeah, uh, and waiting to wander off into the fields and eat grass. All right. Uh, you might have parallels between uh, um, human behavior and uh, people. I don't know. But, but it was this spirit of the outside, of the openness that I'm trying to uh, uh, convey. Of um, Getting out in life and feeling free was, and expansive and letting yes. yourself go and responding to... Yes, to responding, to, responding to, the, uh, to the scene, yeah. uh, to, to, to the life of what is going on there. Painted very um, beautifully, thick, beautiful paint, wonderful arrangement with the cows and the trees and the distant buildings. Okay, we'll go to the next right. uh, Ken McIndoe uh, picture. The next one there is uh, back out into uh, um, an open expanse of that's a field, a boy, all right, nice. and clouds uh, rushing across the summer, late summer. Um, and the wind is going across. And uh, I guess it's back to what I was talking about, the American landscape painters of the past. Um, who, who are you thinking of specifically? Uh, oh, I don't want to Ken, mention well, oh, well, well, I, Ken said I like uh, a great deal. Um, Ennis. And uh, yes, thanks, Phil. <laughs> Ennis. George Ennis. Yeah. George Ennis. Bellows, uh, so, uh, some of the later ones. Uh, and then earlier ones uh, like Bierstadt, but yeah. not quite as much, though. But I, um, yeah, okay, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. It, it seems almost like Constable in a way, you know. Phil well, mentioned Oh, well, that's all right, Constable, fine. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, I, I did come from England, and, uh, and um, I loved his paintings. And so I, I suppose I was influenced uh, in that, in that uh, sense by him. Well, um, I, I wasn't saying it to say that you were influenced necessarily, but there's just the rich, beautiful openness of it and the wonderful... It's a spirit, it. you know? It's a yeah, spirit, exactly. which is important. Okay, next on the line is Philip Sherrod. I guess I'm just going to take the picture off while it's on the air. Shall I do that? Yeah. Okay, we'll do it. Who no, cares? It's not. Informal show. No, we have, we have Inger Yerby, our absent uh, uh, woman painter, who I, I really haven't seen that much of her painting, but it, it has a certain uh, very uh, fantasy-like quality in a sense, obviously responding to reality, but with a very personal, private vision. The colors are very pure and uh, clean and, and somewhat pastelish in the sense that they're pinks and peaches and, and, and light blues, but uh, one certainly gets a sense of the structure of the city here, the overlapping planes of distances in it. Okay, and we have our next one. Uh, we're getting a little grimmer here. Ingrid in a less uh, lighthearted mood, perhaps, with those dark windows and the heavy pile of debris in front of the building. So th these are the street painters. They're different. Uh, visions, but they're out there making contact with life, with reality, and friends, I can't emphasize enough how important that is to reinvigorate art. All great art has always been in contact with uh, reality and human feelings in some way, and when it becomes academic as it has these days, it becomes meaningless as an artistic experience, and I think the street painters are trying to revivify it, and certainly one who can do it is Philip Sherrod. Phil, what are you doing here? Well, uh, I, I think taking uh, possibly a small front uh, place where they do business and running colors and rhythms and, and uh, concerned about words. In, in that particular painting, the signs and the rhythms run really left and the car runs right in the painting. It doesn't show up here in, in, the, uh, black in, the, paint, in the black and white. Yeah, yeah, it's... Uh, okay, but it's a, it's a beauty, you know, using the signs. Reds and, and yellows windows. and whites, yeah. Great color statement, if we could see it. But you can see the originals and many others that you aren't seeing at the 47 Bond Street Gallery uh, in New York, uh, March 12th through April 1st. It's the first premier exhibition of the street painters. Okay, Phil, here we go with the next picture. They're going to be flashing it on here. It's just another one of my compositions, a uh, bookstore, fresh fruit, that sort of thing. There's a vitality and a reality and a p expressive power out there, whether in the people or in the structures that people make, and it's revivifying art to be out in contact with these things, and uh, as Ken McIndoe said. Okay, we're going to Ari Rusimov, and uh, 
Well, what are you doing yes. here? Well, you, this what? painting happens to be a uh, rather large study for a whole group of paintings, and the title of this is Nocturno. And it's a city of imagination, the city of eternity. And in the whole series of paintings are already about four, five, or six, and I'm still working on them. And it's a whole hodgepodge of things. As a matter of fact, the most recent one has a lot of several details from this, and it's called Panopticon, and deals with the circus sideshow, freak show, abnormalities. And it's just a mixture of everything. OK, beautiful painting. Let's move to the next one. And uh, what, what are you doing here in this? Uh Profit-like figure. Well, let me explain it this way. I, I'm a transplant from Russia, but I'm a sort of a transplant that didn't work. They failed on me. <laughs> I'm in the middle of two worlds here. As you can see, the big Rusimov, the little Rusimov, and the Rusimov copter all the way on top. And the city, the street, New York, the city, the street, the church, Russia. And all kind of things are happening, construction that goes nowhere into everything at once, everything rotates. Okay, we're going to move to Simon Gayon. Simon, what are you expressing here in your pictures? Uh, here we go. Well, this is a 42nd Street at 3 o'clock in the morning, a place which for many years, since I was a, you know, an adolescent, had you know, a sexual context, uh, uh, a place for me to go and dream, discover the world and escape downtown. And here I am many years later, you know, painting it, I think with some love and Today it's the downtown for the blacks and uh, has a great deal of vitality and a great deal of, uh, of poetry for me. And when I was a kid, it was a downtown you know, for, for the middle class and uh, always a bit seedy, always a bit uh, frightening, but uh, very, very fascinating. Okay, beautiful, beautiful use of the light. Well, we're going to have to uh, wrap it up. Do we have to close the program? Okay, we'll close on Simon's painting here of in Times Square and invite you to attend the premier exhibition of the street painters at 47 Bond Street Gallery in New York City. And uh, you're going to see something you haven't seen in a long time. Painting is still alive and well in the street painter studios. <laughs>